What is the one thing every human being on earth desires? It does not matter if you are black, white, Hispanic, or Asian. It does not matter if you are Christian, Muslim, or Buddhist. It does not matter if you are a man or a woman, old or young, rich or poor, passive or aggressive, Republican or Democrat, American or Iraqi. It is a universal desire throughout human history. It is so strong of a desire that millions have died for it, and it is the greatest cause to fight for. It is the one idea that could unite all of humanity under a common cause. The best thing about this desire is the more we lose it, the stronger the desire becomes. So what is this one common desire that is universally shared by all? It is freedom. Freedom may take many different personal paths, but in the end, we all want to control our own destiny, to live our own lives, to do what we want to do, to love who we want to love without others interfering. The United States was founded on this simple principle, and it is the last beacon of hope throughout the world. Before the American Revolution, tyranny ruled the world for 6,000 years, and now that same tyranny is rising up everywhere. The greatest truth never told is that humanity has been consistently enslaved over and over again throughout history, and that we can be free the moment we wish to be free. If the torch of liberty dies in the United States, all of humanity will suffer as the powerful seek to enslave the weak. Our founding fathers studied every aspect of freedom. If we seek to be free once again, we must also study every aspect of freedom. With freedom as a uniting cause for all of humanity, we can set about rejecting the paradigm that is based on the spreading of debt and death. And that we can create a new paradigm where there is a level playing field for all to rise to their highest and best self. The American Founding Fathers encapsulated this idea under the founding principle of our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When we see that we have this one commonality throughout all of humanity, we must also recognize that we do not have the right to enforce our version of freedom onto someone else. If you truly want and believe in freedom, you must respect others' expressions of freedom. As long as their expression does not infringe upon your life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, we should be able to be free to do whatever we want. Things are speeding up. It took thousands of years to go through the agricultural revolution. It took hundreds of years to go through the industrial revolution. It took decades to go through the information revolution. Now we are on the verge of a awareness revolution where humanity can finally use all the knowledge from all three revolutions to build something that resonates with what we are and what we are meant to be. We are at a unique period in human history where there is a very real chance that all of humanity will be free of the old world tyrannies and learn to respect and protect each other's freedoms. With the mathematically inevitable collapse of the dollar, all of humanity will be freed from consumerism, narcissism, and militarism. Once freed, humanity will have the knowledge, incentive, and the ability to communicate these ideas of freedom as a way forward. There will be no need to follow down the dark path of fear and coercion. Men and women of all races, ages, and creeds from all over the world can rally around the simple idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Believe nothing, no matter where you have read it or who has said it, not even if I have said it, unless it agrees with your own reason and your own common sense. Buddha What you are about to embark upon is unlike anything else that you've ever experienced. We will set about on a journey that will take us through history and challenge everything that you've ever learned. The reason why this is going to be very different from any other educational experience that you've ever had is that I'm going to insist that you question and critically think about the information I am presenting to you. Do not accept anything I say unless you can confirm it and that it resonates with something in your soul. There you will begin to become totally free. I do not claim to have all the answers, but I do seek to ask all of the questions. My hope for this project is that it becomes the intellectual foundation for a new era of humanity. We can reject the paradigm that is built on spreading debt and death. We can set about creating a new paradigm where people are free to play on a level playing field for all to rise to their highest and best selves. 
I have been influenced by many, and I do not claim to be the originator of most of the ideas I present to you. My unique ability is to bring together the big picture for all to see. This project is an all-encompassing educational experience that will tell you the greatest truth never told. The truth is that humanity has been enslaved over and over again throughout history, and that we can be free the moment we wish to be. This journey will be a dangerous one, in which if I'm successful, will result in your old self dying, so that a new, totally free person can be born. All know the way, but few actually walk it. I have gone through this journey of awakening. I have lived the life of individual opulence, and I have lived the life of collective poverty. I now see the middle path very clearly, and it has led me to my highest and best self. This is, without a doubt, a life-changing experience, and, if enough people grasp the concepts that I present, it could lead to a new era of humanity where freedom rings. Once you are aware of how the world really works, you will no longer be played the fool in your relationships, investments, and thoughts. I have seen that those that are most successful in life are not necessarily the smartest or hardest working individuals. For the most part, they were just in the right place at the right time. This project seeks to give you absolute clarity to take massive action in your life, to prepare for the greatest paradigm shift in human history, the mathematically inevitable collapse of the dollar. This is not simply an American struggle. This is a struggle for all of humanity. And I want to be absolutely clear. I do not just want to scare you and feed you full of doom and gloom. There is a way out, and I would not bring you on this journey if I had not made it through myself. If I could leave you with one piece of advice before we continue on, it is something I came up with that helped me tremendously throughout my own journey. Listen to all, follow none, walk your own path the best that you can. Once, a long time ago, there was a wise Zen master. People from far and near would seek his counsel and ask for his wisdom. Many would come and ask him to teach them, enlighten them in the way of Zen. He seldom turned any away. One day, a powerful man came to visit the Zen master. I have come today to ask you to teach me about Zen. Open my mind to enlightenment. The tone of the powerful man's voice was one that was used to getting his own way. The Zen master smiled and said that they should discuss this over a cup of tea. When the tea was served, the master poured his visitor a cup. He poured and he poured, and the tea rose up to the rim and began to spill over the table, finally onto the robes of the very powerful man. Finally, the powerful man shouted, Enough! You are spilling tea all over me. Can't you see the cup is full? The master stopped pouring and smiled at his guest. You are like this teacup, so full that nothing more can be added. Come back to me when your cup is empty. Come back to me with an empty mind. A mind that is expanded by a new idea will never go back to its original dimension. The six freedoms of total freedom mirror that of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory in psychology that was proposed by Abraham Maslow in his 1943 paper, A Theory of Human Motivation. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is often portrayed in the shape of a pyramid, with the largest and most fundamental levels of needs at the bottom and the need for self-actualization at the top. The most basic need is for survival. The body produces real physical reactions if it does not get food, water, air, or sleep. Once the basic needs are met, safety becomes the most important need. The need for personal and financial security becomes most important. Without the physical security from violence or the financial security from economic safety, you cannot become concerned with the next level of human need, which is love and belonging. Once these two basic needs are met, you have a firm foundation to become emotionally involved with others. This can come in the form of friendship, intimacy, and family. With the acceptance of a loving community, a person now has the ability to move on to his next need of self-esteem. This level allows the person to have self-respect or confidence independent of what others think. This also shows in a more narcissistic lower version where a need for constant praise and respect of others. What a man can be, he must. Abraham Maslow. The final step is self-actualization. This is a point where a person can rise to their highest and best self, where they can express their true self and their unique talents and abilities. These five needs mirror the six stages of total freedom. You need to become physically free, 
in order to become politically and financially free. You must be emotionally free in order to become intellectually free. Once you have that intellectual freedom, then you can then set about connecting with the spiritual freedom to become the highest and best self and find out what you were meant to be. It is very important that we understand that what is true for a single human is also true for human society. If a society does not have food or water, they cannot have a stable political system or a functioning economy. Without the safety of a stable society, interpersonal relationships suffer as people scramble to meet their own physical needs. Without an emotionally healthy society, we cannot produce the intellectual or spiritual thinkers needed to guide and inspire society to its highest levels. So much of what we are going to see later on in this project revolves around social predators keeping humanity at its most basic levels so that no man or society challenges the power that they have. Through the use of debt upon the domestic populace and the use of war on the rest of the world, the elite keep mankind down never to challenge them. Let me read you a quote from an article about the United States using debt-free money and how it could bring world peace and eventually bring down the elite of its time. Quote, If the mischievous financial policy, which has its origin in North America, shall become endurated down to a fixture, then that government will be able to furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry out its commerce. It will become prosperous without precedent in the history of the world. The brains and wealth of all the countries will go to North America. That country must be destroyed, or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. That is from the Times of London, 1862, just before the Civil War. Do you now see the power of total freedom? Our greatest power is to focus the mind on one thing for an extended period of time. Albert Einstein I think, therefore I am. This is a classic question about our existence. But what kind of existence do we have if we don't think? Unfortunately, in most of our existence, we do not really think. Thinking is hard to do, and that is why so few do it. When we let others make decisions for us, we lose our power and our control. We are eventually controlled by others who do think. Most paths towards financial freedom are gone. The stock market, the housing market, and small businesses are collapsing. The job market is the worst since the Great Depression. Entire industries and professions are being wiped away. Life savings and equity are gone just when you need it the most. We are under a tremendous amount of stress, mental, financial, political, emotional, and even spiritual stress. We know that this is not the life we are meant to have, and yet it seems that there is no way out. Every inch of your body is telling you something is really wrong. Every way out seems to bring us right back to where we started, trapped. As a country, we are economically bankrupt, intellectually bankrupt, morally bankrupt, spiritually bankrupt. Our families are broken, our politicians are deaf, our companies are corrupted, our military overstretched, our budgets are blown out, our manufacturing is gutted, our borders are wide open, and nothing seems to turn back the tide. Our world is changing. Our jobs, our money, our government, even our fellow citizens. A paradigm shift in everything you know is happening right now. This paradigm shift happens once in a lifetime. The last time we had a paradigm shift was during the 1920s. The 1920s was known as the Roaring Twenties for its amount of technological innovation and incredible wealth that was produced. During the 20s, we saw the rise of the automobile, highways, power stations, air travel, movies, radio, telephone, and even indoor plumbing. But what soon followed after that was the Great Depression of the 30s and World War II. Now more than ever, people are starting to see that things that cannot go on forever won't. We cannot go into debt forever. Debt is rising on all levels of our life. Federal, trade, state, local, personal, corporate, student, mortgage, credit card, automotive debt is at all-time highs. We cannot have 100 trillion of unfunded liabilities. We cannot keep 0% interest rates and print money without destroying the dollar. 
We cannot continue to have rising health, food, and fuel costs. We cannot have endless, senseless wars and over 700 American military bases overseas. We cannot have 85 million baby boomers retiring at the same time to start taking from the generational Ponzi scheme. We cannot have manufacturing shipped overseas, 20% plus unemployment, and 45 million people on food stamps. We cannot have wide open borders with 25 million illegal immigrants. We cannot have half of Americans obese and 27 million Americans on antidepressants. We cannot continue to have banker bailouts, high frequency trading, or flash crashes. We cannot have just-in-time delivery that only allows three days worth of food and seven days worth of fuel. We cannot continue having a failing schools indoctrinating our kids. We are living in a unique period in human history and all things that cannot go on forever won't. This period will end and it will result in an unimaginable upheaval in every aspect of your lives. In fact, I'm willing to bet that if you're here right now, it already has. The bad news is, it is unfortunately going to get much worse before it gets any better. The good news is that you are here today, and it is not too late to become aware of the big picture and start preparing to thrive and not just survive. Things that cannot go on forever won't. It has a mathematically inevitable end. Our debt-based monetary system must create more debt every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before or it will completely collapse. I will cover this very important fact in much more detail later, but it is essentially we must inflate or die. We are reaching a mathematical end of this paradigm, which will either end in a hyperinflationary depression or an outright default. I have a very good idea on how this will play out and what to do about it, but for now let's concentrate on the fact that it cannot go on forever. The irresistible force paradox asks what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Our way of life is dependent on the absolute necessity of creating more debt every year and it is an unstoppable force that drives humanity. The immovable object is the natural limit to the world. There is only a certain amount of resources that all this money can chase after. There is also a limit to the amount of wealth the top 0.1% can accumulate without tipping the world into revolution. There is also a limit to the amount of lies people will believe to keep the system going. The immovable object, in short, is reality. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of reality. Ayn Rand Total freedom is a concept I came up with to describe the ultimate outcome of this project. It is the idea that you will be totally free to be your highest and best self. That we come into our destiny by throwing off all of the shackles that we and others put onto us. The best thing about the total freedom concept is that it is totally attainable and no power can stop you. You can become free without confrontation, coercion, or violence. It takes very little energy and it is something that you can pass on to others including future generations. Most of us are simply trying to become financially free. The problem I realized early on in life is that you can become financially free and never your highest and best self. I grew up knowing people that had financially everything, and I mean everything, and they were miserable. And yet that is what we're programmed in society to do, to chase after becoming financially free. So many people sacrifice so much for this financial freedom that when and if they get there, they become depressed. I have identified six freedoms that one must attain in order to become totally free. The first freedom is physical freedom. The ability to live your life healthy and pain free. The next freedom is financial freedom. To be debt free and create generational wealth so that you will have the ability to do what you want to do and to be a blessing unto others. The third, political freedom. This is not just the freedom to vote and have a say in politics, but free from ideas that keep us divided against each other. The next one is intellectual freedom. To question everything and logically process information so that we are free from false choices that limit us the fifth step is emotional freedom, to be rid of toxic thoughts and people. The final step is spiritual freedom, the ability to connect to a higher power and fulfill our destiny. When we are free in all those areas, we can become our highest and best self. It is only then that we can lift others around us to show them the way. As this sweeps through society, the world has changed. It is very important to see that this path of freedom is one that is inside of us 
This is unlike everything we've ever been taught. We cannot change the outside world for us to become free. We must change ourselves so that the world can become free.